Hey there, Mystery Movie Recaps here. The movie opens with Spain in chaos due to a severe crisis in Europe, resulting in shortages of basic necessities. The tyrannical government, known as Not Enough for All, takes control and initiates a deadly measure to cope with the crisis. Extermination of the elderly, pregnant women, and children. Some nations, including Ireland, Iceland, and Norway, oppose this brutality, leading many people to attempt to escape to these countries. However, legal means of escape are nearly impossible, forcing people to resort to illegal methods. Among the desperate individuals trying to leave Spain illegally are a married couple named Nico and Mia. They bribe a human trafficker to smuggle them to a local harbor for their escape. The couple hides in shipping containers, evading the authorities and their monitoring helicopters. Along the way, they encounter another smuggler who demands more money. Since they have already given all their money, they are forced to sacrifice their wedding rings. Eventually, they are allowed to board a truck's container that will transport them to the port. Nico's plan is to escape to Ireland by being transported on a cargo ship. Inside the truck, they find themselves among other desperate people, including pregnant women like Mia and families with children. However, nobody interacts with each other as they are consumed by their own concerns. During their journey, Nico presents Mia with a chocolate urging her to save it for later to celebrate their rescue. Through their conversation, it is revealed that the couple tragically lost their firstborn daughter when she was shot by the military. The truck suddenly stops in the morning, and a crowd of people forcefully enters. As the truck becomes overloaded, the smugglers order the people to split in half and get on another truck. When the people resist, they are threatened with guns and forced out. Unfortunately, Nico and Mia get separated in the chaos with Nico loaded onto another truck container. Scared, Mia contacts her husband via phone, and Nico reassures her that they will reunite later since both trucks are heading to the same destination. The truck drives through streets filled with protesters opposing the violence. Mia peeks through a hole in the container, and witnesses the authorities mercilessly killing the rioters and taking women and children away. After some time, the truck stops at a military checkpoint, and the officers inspect the container. Initially, they only find boxes inside as the escapees are hiding behind a false wall. However, the leader suspects a secret compartment and orders the fugitives to come out or face dire consequences. Mia hides herself on a tall wooden crate, while other women reluctantly open the door. The officers open fire, killing everyone except Mia, who clenches her mouth to avoid making any sound. The soldiers clean up the container and release the truck. Mia sends a voice message to Nico, warning him that his truck will be checked next. Later, Mia's container is loaded onto a ship. She tries to contact her husband upon arriving at the port but fails to reach him. Exhausted, she decides to rest and falls asleep. Hours later, Mia is awakened by jolts as the ship goes through a massive sea storm. She cries out for help, but nobody can hear her. The container continues to shake causing her to fall multiple times. At one point, she hits her head and loses consciousness. When she wakes up, Mia discovers water seeping into the container through holes. She looks through a hole and sees other containers sinking into the water. Panicked, she desperately tries to call Nico, but her phone is damaged. She finds a bag left behind by another traveler, containing a working phone. However, she doesn't know the passcode to make a call. Seeing the water flowing inside, Mia searches through the crates and finds various items, including plastic boxes, earphones, flat-screen TVs, vodka, and more. She also finds hoodies and puts one on. Among the items, she discovers yellow tape, which she uses to seal the holes. Mia then uses a pipe to remove the water from inside the container. Days pass, and Mia receives a call from an unknown number, which turns out to be Nico. He informs her that the driver abandoned them outside the city, and it will take time for him to catch up with her. Mia reveals that she is stuck in the middle of the ocean, worrying Nico. Nevertheless, he promises to come up with a plan. During another stormy night, Mia struggles to maintain her balance in the container. She starts experiencing labor pains, and as the water shakes the container, her pain intensifies. She tries to call her husband, but the phone slips from her hand. With no other choice, she takes off her clothes, holds onto the container ropes, and gives birth to a baby girl. 
Mia cleans up the space the next morning and uses the hoodies as diapers for her baby. She tries her best to care for her child, but the infant refuses to eat and continues to cry. In the midst of the desperate situation, Mia hears a squeaking sound and a glimmer of hope sparks in her mind. She decides to use a drilling machine to create holes in the ceiling of the container, hoping to make an opening for escape. However, the noise only agitates the baby, causing her to cry, and Mia is forced to stop. That evening, Mia's breasts finally begin to produce milk, and she feeds her hungry child before putting her to sleep. But as the night progresses, Mia's own hunger becomes overwhelming, and she ends up devouring all the food she has. In the morning, determined to continue her escape plan, Mia resumes drilling the ceiling. She is on the verge of finishing when, unfortunately, the battery of the drilling machine dies. Undeterred, she grabs a pen knife and starts cutting through the metal. However, her exhaustion starts to take its toll, and she can't carry on for much longer. Inside the container, the heat becomes unbearable, and the air becomes scarce. Mia wets a cloth with the sea water to help her child cope with the heat. As time passes, the situation worsens because Mia runs out of food. Desperate, she decides to eat her own preserved placenta, which she had stored in a plastic box. During the night, Mia is haunted by the calls of whales. She tries to remain silent, but when a whale collides with the container, she tumbles and frightens the baby, causing her to cry. In an attempt to scare off the whale, Mia strikes the container wall with a wooden panel, creating loud noises. Days pass, and Mia continues her relentless efforts to create an opening in the ceiling. Unfortunately, her only tool, the penknife, breaks. To make matters worse, her phone still doesn't work, and the clean drinking water runs out. Mia resorts to licking the water drops from the ceiling to quench her thirst, but it's clearly not enough. As time goes on, Mia starts experiencing hallucinations. She sees her elder daughter accusing her of abandonment, but Nico, her husband, appears and assures Mia that it's not her fault. In a semi-conscious state, Mia snaps out of her hallucinations and notices that it's raining. She quickly arranges plastic boxes to collect the water and sips some to quench her thirst. With renewed determination, Mia uses the crate ropes to pull away a piece of the container's metal, finally revealing the sky above. She makes her way out of the container, taking in the fresh air. Mia brings her daughter outside, allowing the baby to experience some freshness as well. However, the troubling reality sinks in as Mia realizes they are surrounded by an endless sea with no land in sight. In a desperate attempt to find food, Mia changes her baby's diaper and throws the dirty one in the water, attracting some fish. This gives her hope of obtaining sustenance. Mia constructs a makeshift tool and tries to catch the fish, but her efforts prove futile. After multiple failed attempts, she finally gives up. Just when all seems lost, Mia spots an airplane passing overhead. Reacting swiftly, she hurries down the container and grabs a piece of a TV screen to reflect the sunlight, hoping to catch the attention of the plane. In her haste, she injures her leg on the sharp edge of the hatch. To make matters worse, the airplane leaves without noticing her. In the next scene, Mia gets down from the container and uses TV wires and metal pieces to stitch up her wound. The process is excruciatingly painful, but she manages to complete it. During the nighttime, she starts weaving together the earphone wires. By morning, she successfully makes a fishing net, which she uses to catch fish. After enduring prolonged hunger, Mia finally enjoys the taste of raw fish. From that day onward, Mia catches fish and stores them in plastic boxes for her meals. She also writes SOS notes, places them in the boxes, and releases them into the sea, hoping that someone will find them. One night, Mia shows some family pictures to her daughter and names her Noah. After talking to the baby for a while, both of them fall asleep. At midnight, Mia awakens to the sound of something hitting the container. She carries the baby and slowly climbs up, only to discover that it's a plastic box. At the same time, she receives a call from Nico, and she's overjoyed to hear his voice. But Nico has bad news. He tried to steal a boat to escape but was spotted by soldiers and got shot. He is currently hiding in a container, losing a lot of blood. Nico apologizes to Mia, knowing he won't make it, and urges her to fight for herself and their baby. 
Mia is devastated but shares the news of their daughter's birth. Nico bids a final goodbye before passing away. Mia's hope shatters once more, and she breaks down in tears. She spends the rest of the night gazing at the sky. The scene fast forwards to day 26, and the container is now half submerged in water. Mia is at the top of the container with her baby, constructing a makeshift raft using materials from the container. During this process, she notices a seagull, which gives her hope of rescue. As night falls, Mia finishes preparing her raft and places her baby in it. Suddenly, she hears a sound within the container and realizes it will sink soon. She dives down to retrieve her belongings and spots the chocolate given to her by her husband floating in the corner. She swims towards it, but her leg gets tangled in some ropes. The container starts sinking as Mia struggles to free herself. At the last moment, she manages to cut the rope and swims up to the surface. As Mia resurfaces, panic sets in when she doesn't see her baby. Just then, a whale passes by and expels some water on the baby, prompting her to cry. Mia hears the crying and swims towards Noah. The next morning, completely exhausted, Mia throws the fish she had captured, hoping to attract some birds. In her weakened state, she talks to Noah, claiming that she did everything she could. Meanwhile, a fishing boat is casting nets in the area. The fisherman and his family notice a seagull surrounding something. They sail closer and discover a raft with a child. They quickly pull the raft up and notice a rope attached to it. They pull it until Mia's body emerges. The rescue group brings her aboard the boat and immediately begins performing CPR. Initially unresponsive, Mia is brought back to life through continuous chest compressions. When she regains consciousness, her first concern is for her baby, whom the fisherman's wife gently hands to her. It takes some time for Mia to realize that she's safe, and tears well up as she sees that they're approaching the shores of Ireland. Click subscribe and stay tuned.